Hey everyone and welcome. Today we'll be walking you through a lane phase where we sent one of our challenger experts, Latman, down to Platinum Elo to see how he carries and how you can do it too. In this matchup, he's playing Lucian Leona versus Fresh Draven, who's notoriously difficult to get early leads against in lane. Both of these matchups are all in engaged lanes, but with Draven having superior damage early on with his Q. With all in mirrors, you generally want to have the wave neutral or ideally pushing towards you so that you can engage and have the chance of backing off to your tower instead of being completely all in, getting chased down far up in lane if things go bad. By having the wave near your tower, it makes it harder for your opponent to look for their all ins as well. This is a contrast to when you have a ranged lead, where you often push the first couple of waves while harassing, then you let it bounce into a freeze with your health lead, as we saw recently with our Kaisa Nami vs Thresh Queen Guide. In this game, Latman's missions are going to be cheese early, let the wave push, and look for all ins and ganks. These missions are different to what we usually teach, and we'll explain why as we get into it. Let's get started. Jumping into it, and what we're about to see is basically what we always see when Latman uploads his own gameplay. He's always looking for a calculated early cheese right at the start of the game. We've taught a few of these, and this one is something that he recently perfected while practicing in China, where they are known for their early cheesing before the minion spawn. Let's first see how it plays out, and then break down how to execute this correctly, as we can guarantee that most players would fail trying to attempt this in a similar scenario. Rolling it back, and we can see that Latman is setting this whole thing up via chat and also via pinging them. We see Leona is taking a path that would have gotten her spotted by the Thresh, but Lap wants her to go through the brush and around to avoid being seen. They group up at the edge of this wall, and then they make their move, which ensures that whoever is in the try won't spot them until the very last moment. Watching this from Thresh's point of view, we can see how Latman escorted his team around the line of the tri-brush vision the entire time and as efficiently as possible, giving Thresh the lowest time to respond and placing the ward in the tri the moment that they walk into vision so that they can get the earliest possible view on Thresh as they get spotted. But wasn't this really risky? If Draven and Graves are waiting in that brush, they would get stomped in that 3v3. And you're right, that would have been really bad. But usually, people don't stack up in the try here unless you have a hook champion or a Morgana where they would very much be expecting an invade. Anyway, Laman backs and buys a longsword and a potion for his troubles, and if he was against a poke lane, he would buy two pots and boots to dodge spells with this initial lead. After leashing, the opposing team can test Latman's path through the river. Even with first blood, this would still be a close 2v2 where Draven should win if played out correctly. Let's see what happens. Did you spot why that was so one-sided for Latman? The big difference here is that Latman turned around and allowed his tank support to move forward while Draven moved further ahead than his support, causing himself to get focus fired and controlled. Another key thing is that Latman is pinging immediately that there's a fight, and it's likely that the opposing team did not do this, so Kane responds and Graves does not. Players often get mad saying oh my jungler is blind or whatever if only the opposing jungler comes to help in this situation, but just ping it, then you're way more likely to grab your jungler's attention and they can join the fight. Anyway, at this point Latman is now 3 kills up at 2 minutes into the game. The big takeaway here is that Summoner's Rift starts before the minions spawn. Now he's completely set up to effortlessly take over the game. We could end the guide here after teaching this cheesy path, 
since it could be difficult to convince you that what happens next is relevant to most of your games, right? But we know for a fact from working with our research groups that gaining advantages is often difficult to translate into complete domination of the game, which Latman is able to do without breaking a sweat. So let's move forward and you will learn some well kept secrets for the subtle moves that you can make to truly snowball an early lead. Remembering back to our missions, we can safely say mission 1 is complete, and this doesn't really change mission 2 or 3, despite being 3 kills up. You will still want to let the wave push towards him and look for all-ins and ganks, since shoving and trying to harass won't do anything for a Leona lane where they're protected by their tower. They want to draw their opponents out and keep killing them. Let's speed it up while he works on mission 2. By shoving the wave to the tower, it will bounce back towards him in the center and push towards his tower. On his recall, he buys the standard 2 minute timing of a vamp scepter, refillable and a control ward. Notice how Leona stayed in lane for no reason instead of immediately recalling though, and now their base timings are different. Now we've just seen Lucian pass through his jungle into the river. This is the most efficient use of time to get back to lane after shoving. Instead of just being in lane, strafing around, waiting for the wave to push back towards you, you can be out on the map, warding, potentially making plays with your jungler, killing scuttle, or even ganking mid. Just being MIA can apply pressure. If Leona had timed her base with the Lucian, then this could of course be more effective. In this case, he simply wards and goes back to lane, but we'll touch on this again later when he effectively wins the map by consistently applying this concept. He gets into lane, dodges hook, and pushes up for pretty much no reason, since he has no CS to get and Leona isn't here, so he tanks some damage for free. The Draven Thresh do a good job, and push fast enough to nearly get the wave under tower. This is where Latman wants the wave for mission 2 so that they can look for all ends and ganks for mission 3, but ideally Latman would get a freeze to keep the wave here over time. The Draven lane should be focusing on shoving and then backing off to ward or recall. Draven steps forward and gets engaged on, but Latman can't commit to this because of the huge wave despite being fed. This push is exactly what the Thresh Graven should be doing right now, and it's time for them to back off and let the wave push towards them. But instead, the Draven went for a pointless auto and gets stunned in tower range and dies. Not much to say here besides this being the exact reason that you want the lane to be on your side in melee all-in mirror matches. Being near your tower protects you from that win condition while enabling you to get your own all-ins. After running Thresh down and putting him at 5 kills of 4 minutes, what would you do next if you were the Lucian? So the best thing to do is once again, shove the wave. They have the river ward, which should spot graves should he show up, and by shoving, he will complete mission 2 again by getting the wave pushing towards him once again. After shopping, he passed through the jungle while the wave is pushing. By going straight into the river, they pick up the Infernal Dragon this time. This is the right call, because Kane is here, enemy bot lane is pushed in, while Lucian got onto the map faster, and both mid laners are resetting. So at worst, this would be a 1v3 should the opposing grave show up. If even numbers were possible, they wouldn't go for the dragon since a full out 3v3 or 4v4 would be too risky, even with Lucian's lead. They want to use their tempo advantage for guaranteed snowballing, which is most easily done by taking the isolated 2v2 in lane for now. Let's see what happens next as Lucian returns to lane. Alright, so as Draven steps up here, it may appear that he's super tilted and this would never work, stepping up to a 5 kill Lucian for a 2v2. However, given how strong Draven is with his Q in lane, he can still win this fight with this massive million advantage with the wave that's here and the wave coming in. But this in the end is a total tilt move since he must have known that Kane is super close, 
given that they just killed Dragon, so it was always going to be an eventual 3 vs 2. Laman once again pushes the way for another bounce, doing the same thing over and over for mission 2. Once more, as the wave is pushing towards him, he goes through the jungle after buying. So this is the third time that he's pathed straight through the river after shoving. First time he simply put down a ward, second time he killed Infernal, and this time we see Graves is nearby. This Graves has all of the enemy kills right now and is 4 kills to 0. Remember how we talked about how time wasting in lane while waves push back to you is suboptimal? That's exactly what this Leona is doing, giving us a great visual for efficient time usage between these two players. Anyway, that man beelines towards the Graves, warding the brush immediately to get vision control, catching the Graves totally off guard and wins this 1v1. To give you a better idea of this subtle parallel pathing with the control ward, look at Graves' field of vision as Latman does this. Had Lucian pathed to the side, Graves would have seen this coming. So now that Latman has just stamped out the opposing team's only chance of winning with their 4-0 Graves shut down, you are probably thinking that you could never solo a fed jungler like this as an ADC unless you were super fed like in this case. But if Leona was on the same page here, and with Latman, pathing through the jungle river after shoving, they could 1v2 the fed graves even if Lucian himself wasn't so strong, having a huge impact on the game. Anyway, they get back into lane and once again reap the rewards of having the wave push towards them for mission 2, executing mission 3 once more. Or, well kind of. That man doesn't have player attack bound apparently, so he trades a juicy 1v1 thanks to opening fire on the tower. This is now the first time they didn't get a shove before backing, so it's time to path through the lane to grab the minions this time since there's nothing to wait around for. He finds a 1v1 with the Draven, and is now warmed up enough to hit the player and not the tower, concluding today's guide on cheesing and snowballing hard. Let's get into a brief recap before closing this out. Latman came into this as a multi-season challenger and LCS experienced player versus a high platinum lane. He chose to use one of his cheesing strategies to score an early kill onto Thresh. Upon returning to lane after a quick buy, he outpositions Draven in a straight up 2v2, securing two more kills, sealing the lane in the right hands. To convert this lead, Latman constantly shoved the wave and let it bounce towards him over and over, catching his opponents pushed up in lane countless times, playing to his standard matchup strategy, but to huge effects given his early lead. He consistently applied the concept of not wasting time after shoving, via pathing through jungle into river to impact the map, and not waste time in lane, waiting for the wave to push towards him. This scored him an inferno and shutting down the enemy team's only hope, solo carrying this game, he ended up with 28 kills. Alright, so that's it for this one. Thanks for watching and we will catch you next time.